What do you say, everybody? 14 guitars here. Third week in a row out at the Manchester. Forgive my lisp, I've got my new mouthpiece in. I'm not wearing my retainer. I made a custom mouthpiece that, uh, you know, the kind that you warm up. You heat them up and fold them over your teeth when they're warm so they fit nice and tight. I'd rather my retainer stay safe at home because it's a lot more expensive than the 12 bucks or whatever I paid for this uh, mouthpiece that's making me lisp so badly. Anyway, we're out here at Manchester for, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ride the same trails that I've been riding, the green, uh, I'm sorry, red, green, and blue. And um, I've been uh, putting in time on the exercise bike, doing pull-ups, push-ups, walking in the sun to get vitamin D up. I kind of feel like, uh, you know, I kind of got off the bike for a long time, and I've been preaching it in my videos, so I thought, let me at least uh, start riding 15 to 20 uh, minutes a day on the exercise bike on the dates that I'm not riding dirt bikes. At least five days a week if I can. I think I rode four days last week. I rode yesterday. I'm a little bit tired, <laughs> um, not used to it. And I had some had it set on some pretty high settings for resistance, trying to get that heart rate up. I managed to get the heart rate up to about 177 at one time, which is a lot for me on an exercise bike. It's quite a bit. Anyway, uh, today I'm just going to ride and have a good time. I may talk about fitness. I may talk about gear. I really don't have a plan. I may not talk at all or much. Yeah, we know that's not right, but I won't talk as much maybe. We'll see. But just out for a good ride to... Uh, this is kind of a, um, my target is a medium medium speed ride, kind of a, just to evaluate my fitness uh, after a week on the exercise bike. So we'll see. Everybody have a great, great day. I hope you enjoy the video. Well, that's weird. That's, oh. Got to turn the fuel on, or the bike's not going to start. Takes a minute for the fuel to fill up in the carburetor. Oh, I guess I accidentally turned the choke off too.
dude, boys. Get the red. It's pretty dry today. You know those those great conditions of last week are gone. So, just gotta take it for what it is. There's a little bit of moisture you can see in the dirt, but nothing like it was last week. But it's so good. If the trail up here where it crosses the road, I wonder if they cleared those logs. You know, they're doing some logging and the next trail was blocked. Just had to go a little past it, but it was a little bit of a surprise. Not a big deal. Pretty sure they would have loaded all those logs up and hauled them away. Pull for lumber Here. That's 
saw a deer run across the trail this day, but I'm not sure. Let me check the video. Like I said, in the, in the woods, I like to ride it up, I like to see everything. I don't want to miss anything. A lot of beauty. Advisory for goggles, huh?
видели? Actually, you do both, right? You can lean it or rich it depending on the temperature. If it's really hot, there's less there's less uh, weight of air per cubic foot than when it's cold, right? Dense air, there's actually more of it. I mean, for the same uh, substance, more dense by definition, more of it, right? Pack a, pack a half a gallon of water in a gallon jug, that's not nearly as dense as a gallon of water in a gallon jug. Well, air works similarly. There's more molecules in cold air for a given volume than hot air. Leaning your bike in hot weather allows more air to enter the carburetor and mix with your fuel. But since there's less oxygen per half per, per cubic foot, right, per volume, you're adding the number of oxygen molecules into the mixture, right? Low density air, you need more of it to get the same ratio of air to fuel. And fuel in the bike is like fuel in the body. Oxygen, right? Combined with the fuel to get off energy and then the byproducts of combustion. Our bikes, whether you're sea level or 5,000 feet for a standard carburetor, they feed the same amount of air at a particular jetting setting, right? I'm sorry, same amount of fuel. Fuel's not compressible. It's a fluid that can't be compressed. So for a certain jet size, woo, you're gonna get a certain number of fuel molecules. So if it's hot, air doesn't have enough as many molecules, you need more air. It's cold, there's more molecules, more molecules of oxygen in cold air. So you can rich in the mixture, add more fuel for a given amount of air. We're actually varying though air, not fuel. Fuel flows constant. At a given jetty, regardless of altitude, because it's an incompressible. So an air screw allows us to adjust more or less volume of air, which gives us more or less oxygen molecules. molecules to fuel molecules. So that's all you're doing. You're correcting the ratio of oxygen molecules. I think air has like 21% oxygen. I think something like that. Most of the rest is nitrogen. but I believe it's something like that. <laughs> it might be 14%. That doesn't sound right though. But I don't really, I've never really looked closely at air fuel mixtures. It's easy to look up, right? The main point is, if you got your jets perfect for winter, you're not gonna 
change your jets. You can lean your air fuel mixture. I've noticed uh, since I've been on the exercise bike is that I started sweating earlier. That's one of the adaptations to warm weather and exercise is your body uh, learns to sweat earlier than it might if you're out of shape or in cooler weather. Sort of like advanced cooling system, right? It puts out the sweat before you're too hot. Whereas you're not acclimated to the heat. By the time your body realizes you're getting hot, you're already kind of overheated. So definitely notice the difference in that. Feels good. I'm gonna call it Danny's Crossing since that's where we got stuck that day in that, that mucky mud. And there was a spring run there. Trying to make it up that hill. Quicksand was crazy. These needles. They are slick. They are excellent friction reducers. The rear end of the bike just slides. Where are we? The flooded swamp. I guess the drive let it swamp, right? Is that what I call it? Yeah, this dirt's a little wild today too. It's in no hurry to hook up. <laughs>
one inch uh, sapling back by my, my hand guard. That's a good reason to at least have gloves. Um, I'm basically a fan of, of hard uh, wrist guards. <laughs> Lever guards. I bounced my box like on so many things. And never broke a lever. my booty just barely just tapping it just saying you're almost out of room there with those little legs <laughs> here is everything uh, strength and endurance because if you can stay on your legs you can tell when I sit down I go slow if you can stay on your legs which uh, uses a lot more oxygen uh, you'll do so much better out here go faster be safer Those 
big vines should hang down. Watch those beasts, they're strong enough to support at least a kid. I used to swing across little ravines on them when I was young. So be careful of those. of uh, how going straight is a lot rougher than going from side to side. This side, this side. Left side, right side. Left side, right side. Left side, right side. Left side, right side. Right side.
to put the bike in a little gear higher so that uh, the motion of grabbing your face you know slightly whiskey throttle and run off the road <laughs> definitely my weak spot out here so that's why I've been turning up the exercise bike to a little bit higher settings resistance to try to build strength and endurance in my legs
It's got to be up there. I can feel it. And it's hot. You know, your heart has to beat faster when it's hot. It's cool you off. Circulate blood more. bouncing off so many trees if you look at the video a week ago I'll bet you'll see in these same sections everything's poking up higher because it's filled with water that water provides a turbidity the stiffness Tur tur turgid turgid the plants makes it stiff soft plants Not 100% responsible, but you know, you all know your plants are root when, when they dry out. The flowers. Same thing happens. I'm not going to stop. 
but if it starts to approach 103, I'm going to stop and spool off. It's going to take my gear off a little bit. Stand there. Of course, you got to be careful where you stand there with your motocross pants going down to your knees trying to pull off. If you're on one of these uh, forest trails, I've, I've had a ranger come by and ask me if I was okay. And you know, I wear football shorts, you know, football padded, football under right? So they, they don't look like underwear. They got hard pads on them. But if you're a speedo guy, you might have some explaining to do. And even me with my pants and shorts, I have little explaining to do. But I think it was a day when we had a, a feels like temperature of 113. So as soon as I said, just cooling off, he waved and kept right on driving. He told me got it. the blue trail has a little more elevation change not a lot i don't know what the total elevation change out here is not much but it's better than nothing and the, the D trail that's the most what passes for 3d out here Man. A lot of stuff looming right now. 
That's what I said. <laughs> really tired y'all all right call it Whew. Whew. Uh. Whew. what's in that truck oh yeah a couple of burritos sharp cheddar cheese with uh shredded uh beef tenderloin filet mignon Whew. all right everybody Another one down at Manchester. Talk to you later.